so this is a nice break from the Canadian winter. This is Monarch Beach in Orange County, and I must have tipped this moped over at least 20 times. We're starting on the back nine at Monarch Beach, and we're teeing it forward, because golf is supposed to be fun. I'm in a bit of a slump right now, and I'm hoping that between the beautiful backdrop and the forward tees, that we can go under 80 today. But on the very first hole, a wedge from only 90 yards winds up in a greenside bunker. That's not a great effort from the bunker, and the greens here at Monarch are very slick, and being above the hole is pretty dangerous today. And we'll have to get out of the first hole with the bogey. I'm not the greatest ball striker, so I know that in order to break my slump, I'll need the flat stick cooperating at one point or another today. And on the second hole, I hit one to only about 12 feet. And I thought this one was going to make it, but it just misses a bit low. This round will show that there are many ways to score. There are only three par fives at Monarch, and as a low handicap, I usually do the majority of my scoring on par fives. I'm trying to take advantage of this one here, but from only about 60 in, I catch this one a groove low, and it misses in a terrible spot in the back of the green. And that putt had to be quite a bit firmer on that line to stand a chance, and I'll be left with 10 or 12 feet for par. And just like the last hole, it looks like it's tracking, but it misses a hair high, and we'll settle for bogey. Conversely, statistically speaking, par threes are usually my worst scoring holes. This one misses a pace short. We're rocking onto the green at the par three. What a day. It's a pretty cool spot. Can't complain. And as usual, whenever I plant good thoughts in my mind, oh! that tells you what the stats are good for. The game isn't played on paper. Here I have designs on drawing this drive around this fairway bunker but it manages to find it. And it's pretty windy out there, so we lost that shot. We've gone bunker to bunker now. And after manufacturing a stance here, I actually hit a pretty good one, and we'll leave only about seven feet for par. But for the third time today, we leave one just about an inch off. Whoa. It's gonna kick right, watch this. Kick right, kick right, kick right, come on. Oh, well, it's going. It's yeah, going. going. It's going down the hill. Well, you gotta get it there. Nah, I wouldn't have gone it anyway. It's another sharp par four here that right. should leave a short iron or wedge in. Oh, and no. I didn't quite know how this ball was going to react out of the fluffy rough, and my club went right under it and misses once again short into a greenside bunker. And we've done a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde act out of the bunkers today. Some great shots and some terrible shots. And this one didn't leave us in range to make the par putt. And that's a generous give from Mike for the bogey. We're playing straight into the fan now, and that's a sucker pin if I've ever seen one. I aim for the middle of the green, but unfortunately I miss all the way in the back left. And we would call this three putt territory, but nonetheless I would have liked to have done a bit better with my first putt than that one. And that's another putt that I thought would have it. And we've missed quite a few of those today. We're still into it here on nine. And I hit a good drive that doesn't go all that far. And I'm not sure if I've ever hit a hybrid from 150 yards. But I did commit to it, and fortunately it catches a piece on the front of the green. And after a disappointing lag putt on the last hole, this one has the weight, and we'll close the nine with a par. I drove the ball well on the front by my standards, and I hit the green virtually every time I gave myself a chance to. But unfortunately, when missing the green, I just couldn't get up and down. And it's this last stat that really tells the story. 17 putts won't cut it. I didn't middle this drive, and I knew right away that it was going to miss into a bunker. Our fifth and ten holes so far. But the Jekyll and Hyde act continues, and this one is hit well enough, and I'll be just off the front of the green with a long lag putt here. And I spent quite a bit of time on this three foot downhiller here. I aimed at center left, and it found the hole. Back on the subject of not putting too much credence into the stats. On the front nine, I bogeyed stroke holes 10, 14, and 18. And on the 11th hole, it's our first 400 plus yard par four of the day 
and it's stroke hole 3, so in theory I'm expecting a bogey here. But my approach misses just a few feet off the back, and I make a par. This is the signature hole at Monarch, and maybe one of the signature holes in all of Orange County. That's not a bad backdrop for your approach shot. And this one's pin high, and I have to stop and take one more look at the background behind me here. That's a pretty happy Canadian. And now I'll have about 15 feet for birdie. The trend of missing these continues. I'm not particularly phased, and the Vancouver Legion will stop for one more photo here. The routing turns back inland now, and I'm going to find yet another bunker here. I'm really addicted to them today. That's not a particularly good one either, and after this round I did go down the YouTube okay, rabbit hole and give myself something of a bunker lesson. But I mentioned earlier that the flat Break. stick would have to do things Break. for me today. It's in! Yes! And we get one here. <laughs> this is the fifth and final par three at Monarch, and I hit my hybrid skinny but get away with it. And as I walk up to the green here, I'm kind of in awe of the Waldorf behind me, and there's a Ritz two minutes away, and to quote my friend, they're not messing around about how much money they've got in Orange County. I gave that putt way too much respect. Pretty bad. And I'll leave myself about four feet for par, and this time we make it. So oddly enough, I played the par threes even par, and the long par four is okay but it's these short par fours and the par fives that have given us trouble. And after a horrible drive there, it was an equally horrible effort trying to muscle a hybrid out of a lie where I just didn't have a shot. I'm lucky to be putting from just off the green for par here, and given some of those horrible swings, we're just fine with a bogey. Two of the final three holes are par five, and I'd really like to make hay on them. And I'll give myself a great look at it here from only 2.30 in, and I thought I'd hit my line here, only to discover that my ball tumbled back into a hazard. And man, this isn't the first time we've closed rounds with shots like this lately. I think I get quick, I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to let it ruin my day. But it is frustrating to have a scorable hole and make a double bogey. I've gotten away with a lot of very poor driver strikes, but this is easily my best of the day and it'll leave me just 115 in. That one looked like it was in danger of flirting with the bunker, but we finally catch a break, and we'll get oh, out of this one with nice the pot. This is another really solid one. It lands on a down slope, and I'll be left with only 200 in. But then trying to muscle it, I do that. And my ego decides I just need to prove to myself that I can hit this shot. I load up again, and I might have steered this one, but it's right on line. And this is the old second ball putt for eagle. It's no good, and it's a funky way to make a bogey on 18. We'll close the day 8 over par, and I guess on a par 70 it counts as breaking 80. There were a lot of misses with driver today, but I got away with them. We hit only a third of the greens in reg, and didn't scramble all that well. But here's the difference. After 17 putts on the front, 13 on the back kept it in check, and this is one to build on for the rest of the California trip.